This is Legacy Matthew Priest from BCWA, and you are listening to the STW Podcast. Nobody? Alright, that's cool. No, that's a I just want to know why you're a kid tugging on people. I didn't yeah. tag, not tug. Oh, I thought like you said tug. tug. It sounded like tug. Tag you, and then you came back to life. So the question is, how often can we do this before Garvin unmutes himself and yawns? I've already unmuted myself like oh, three okay. times. <laughs> Alright everybody, welcome to the FTW Podcast, Wrestling World Now It's Laughable Glory. I am Harrison, and with me as always is Jay to the Rizzo Joe. Say hello, Joe. Woo, woo, woo. Kevin's drunk. Hell yeah, he is. Crown Royal K-Pax Kevin, say what's up. Let the Crown Royal Podcast begin. He is... Uh, it, it, dude, you're like three quarters in the bag. At this point. <laughs> and uh, our Dizzle, right, Rob, that means say hi. I got, a full, that means hey. I got a full quarter to go, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> You're in this, a bag, in another bag, in another bag. Like a, ch- like is, a Russian nesting doll. This is like our Christmas present from Kevin. This really is. Does anybody else remember last year's like 20 minute rant on, on probably like possibly nothing? Because that was so awesome. No, it started. What did it start about? It started with. It had a legitimate topic, and then that train just derailed and took out a village. <laughs> and then that village rolled down the mountain and took out a yeah. city. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, exactly. It was. You, it was you, exactly. you know what you're doing right now? You're only asking me to one off last year's rant. Yes, we are. So. so you better start. Women wrestlers PCC. not getting paid. That's right. That was two years. No, that was Why two years ago. Stop. Now you need to start shooting the PCP now. Uh, all right. So opener stuff first. Thing I wanted is uh, our Facebook question of Facebook fan question uh, from last week. I wasn't on, so I'm assuming it happened. Uh, uh, WWE and TNA ratings versus how WWE and TNA is focused on the instant reactions of their fans on Twitter. You notice that the in recent months. Uh, do you think that these companies are making a mistake by ignoring ratings and answering the calls of their fans directly via Twitter? Um, overall, it seemed like a mixed reaction. I guess Garvin, did you want to weigh in on this? Sorry. Uh, yeah, basically, it was a mixed reaction. We uh, we asked our, our, our two Facebook groups that were a part of both uh, TWR Network and The Marks, and it seemed like everyone had different opinions of, of what they thought. Uh, well, what, but, were the, what were the positives, or was it, it, it was it basically this isn't a problem, or...? Yeah, basically, it, it was either is this a problem or is this not a problem. Um, it, it was actually mostly it's not a problem. Uh, it, it, seemed, it seemed like most people... Thought it was okay that um, that they were following Twitter versus you know the Nielsen ratings, yeah. um, but you know both systems are flawed. So I, I guess okay. only time will tell which 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 uh, which direction is the right one to go with. So okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, and uh, first we and uh, second we want to send a shout out to Steve Credo, who's the man behind the uh, at Marks for Life and the Marks Facebook group. He turned thirty this week old man so happy birthday to him and uh speaking of credo he pointed out that we are under 100 days until wrestlemania 28 i'm surprised wwe isn't hammering that home i mean legitimately like 100 days you figure with the rock showing up they would be wanting to shoot that uh all right cool let's start with impact from the uh sorry all right cool let's start with impact rob what was your favorite thing about impact go rob Uh, um Four matches. Four matches and a two-hour show. That was your favorite thing? A two-hour show that tries to convince us that that is. Um, I really don't think I have a favorite thing when I look at what was here. I mean, uh, the the X Division match between uh, Nice and Zemion, that was fantastic. Those two had a great match. Um... Daniels and RVD, the tag match, that was good. Uh, Good match. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Good match. It was a good match because you're drunk, man. 
No, I was not drunk for that. Good match. Um, I don't like the uh, some of what they were doing with the whole um, um, uh, random tag team matches, like uh, Anarchy of uh, and uh, Shannon Moore against uh, EY and ODB. Dear God, that was a train wreck. Yeah, and Rob, you, you've mentioned this for several weeks now. You've talked about how they won't show a woman hitting a man, and I've... Uh, you, man hitting a woman. Thank you. <laughs> but now you see that the that ODB beat, Anar- or, uh, beat Anarchia, and how much credibility does he have anymore? Darn. That's it. Yeah, he, he, he's so, done. I mean, I was surprised that they let it. him body slam her. I, I, I was surprised that Spike TV allowed that to go on. Me too. Um, but, but now, now uh, ODB pinned him. He has no credibility at all. And pinned him with a kick to the balls, basically. I mean, that was the final move of the match. Is she comes up, kicks him in the balls, gets the pin. Um, Obviously, to save face, but does it matter? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, no. to me, that just wrote him off. That said, Anarchy, congratulations. You're our new bitch because Eric Young has fan sport. Well, <laughs> well, first, I, I, I've thought Anarchia has uh, to be written off for a while. Um, since his arrival in TNA, I've thought it's um, more development and does not deserve to be where he is right now. So hopefully this is a prelude to that. I, I, I mean, but on the whole, like, the the knockouts match was a goddamn train wreck. What energy existed before, and, and they were getting the crowd involved before that. But then, you know, you have this, you know, just god-awful abortion of a match um, in which uh, you've got Tess Mocker and Tara trying to be forced to fight each other by Madison Rain, And it went nowhere. I mean... Was the match that terrible? There. there was Aside no match. Aside from the crowd. Well, I mean, there okay. Was, there was no match. They they wrestled around with a little while. They got tired. They hit Madison Rain. Both of them Tebow in the middle of the that ring. That was awesome. That was the segment. That was not awesome, Harrison. Hey, Tebow, that's great. No. I, love, I love the Tebow reference. It was so uh, well done. No, it was not well done, uh, Eric, uh, teach his own. That's fine. I hey, love, uh, that's been well done. Speaking of which, uh, Eric Rossin on uh, Facebook, a uh, uh, friend of ours on Facebook, said this is why TNA can't be taken seriously. They're getting cheap props by T-Bowing. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So why what? not run with what's popular? Exactly. Every band before every segment goes, hello, Cleveland, for a cheap pop from the crowd. Why is a Tebow any different? And uh, Steve Espinoza agreed, saying that was weird. Madison and the girls were trying hard to make it that an entertaining segment, and the crowd was crickets for most of it, every single heckle from the crowd. Uh, also, TNA didn't pipe any crowd noise for that match, which is strange considering they did forever. It was a production miscue, or you know, maybe they were purposely trying to make the knockouts look dumb. couple of things. I, I liked that I saw TNA flashed up near the beginning of the show a question with a hashtag to ask on Twitter. Yeah, they've been doing this the, for uh, a few weeks now. Yes, very well done. And, and, you know, you don't have to shove it down our throats like the WWE is. What's wrong with that question? Maybe somewhere in the next later in the broadcast responding to some of those or on the next broadcast, whatever it might be. It's a great idea. It's so much better than beating us over the frickin' head with it like WWE is currently. But uh, if you listen to my... Uh, uh, but to answer Harrison's question, if I had to pick out what in this just really downer of an impact, it was the no DQ street fight, uh, RVD and Daniels versus Kazarian and AJ Styles. Um, I thought the match was well done, but it could have been better. Kevin, you disagree? Yes. So that was right. good. I liked it. However, I will go ahead and say that the Kurt angle bar fight was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Um, 
Thank you. For, you know, reasons <laughs> that uh, I've been to many bars and head. maybe gotten in bar fights. Um, however, him throwing the crisp tree on them at the end, I was losing it there. Okay. <laughs> but he uh, just picked it up and tossed it on all of them. That was no, no. It was worse when he lines the guys up and just <laughs> yes. super kicks each one. I'm like, yeah. seriously? <laughs> that was beyond absurd. However... They say I have to give him the picking up of the Christmas tree. It's just throwing it on top of all of them. That was yeah, great. It, it was all overall, the show was pretty bad. Okay, Underneath speaking of uh, speaking of over the top and pretty bad, Garvin, why don't you run us through Super Okay, sounds good. Um, there were four matches in Superstars, which is um, a lot different than Impact, because Impact was two hours. Superstars is less than an hour. So just to show you the uh, the comparison there. Uh, the first match was Justin Gabriel versus Heath Slater, which was actually a, um, a pretty quality match between the two. Um, they really pushed the the whole backstory where they used to be tag partners and how they've progressed since then. Um, and one thing to note, you know, there's 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 one difference between being on Raw and SmackDown and, and being on Superstars. You know, with with the commentators like Josh Matthews and Matt Stryker, they really tell the story of each guy involved. There's rarely references to outside happenings unless it's, it directly affects those that, that are competing, um, which is, you know, something that, that we were critical on when, when we were talking about, you know, previous Raw and SmackDowns or even ROH, where, you know, ROH, they'd spend 75% of the show building up past stories and whatnot through segments instead of talking about during the individual matches. And, you know, superstars, it was basically a lot more focused. You were focused in on the wrestlers themselves that were participating on this, which is really nice to see. But I think that's because there's not a whole lot. Like with Raw and SmackDown, there's all these storylines that they got to keep revisiting. Where SmackDown, I mean, where with Superstars, they don't really have a lot of that because it's a lot of, you don't have the big names on the show. You know, you have a lot of the, the, the undercard sure. working, so you don't have as much of that type of storytelling that you feel they feel they need to do. But no, I mean Justin Gabriel and Heath Slater wasn't actually was actually a good match. That was, that was pretty sweet. And the match that followed it, Hunico and Ezekiel Jackson. Dude, not a bad match. Yeah, this was uh this was two straight wins for um for Hunico. Um and it's it's nice to see how they're trying to to progress his character outside of what we saw with, you know, Sin Cara. Now it's not like, you know, Sinkara Negro versus Sinkara uh, Blue. They're, they're actually pushing Hunico as the separate guy, trying to make it in uh, in the WWE, and it's nice. It's nice that they broke it off and are giving him a big win over Zeke, who is a former champion. So now they've added some um, legitimacy to him. Um, so it, sh- it should be interesting to see what they do. Um, My bitch, though. Yeah. Ezekiel Jackson with hair. Yeah, he lo- he does look really really weird. <laughs> he he looks retarded, but I I mean unless they're going to like I mean they're going to try and change his look drastically, and this is just the beginning of it, or it's either that or just shave the head, man, go back to the. the you heard it neck. here first. Joe likes bald men. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I used to be one. Big big bald man. By the way, big black big bald, bald, black man. bald Whoa, man. Black yes. bald man. Yes. Yes, with a lot of teeth. <laughs> uh, okay, so next up, Alex Riley and Michael McGillicuddy. Um, one thing that we've read um, on our Twitter timelines is there's a lot of people who are backing Alex Riley. I can't agree. I don't see anything that I really like about this guy as an individual um, wrestler. You know, The problem for me is he had all this momentum – coming off the Miz giving this giant push. Giant! I mean, proving how good the Miz is, and he's just freaking bad. He didn't do anything with it. I mean, guys wouldn't but he had. Kill. And he just... What? Yeah, he's... Dude, nothing. He's got... He's got less than no talent in the ring. I mean, his moveset suck. There's not one positive to him that I can think of. And, I mean, it's just all around. It's bad. Yeah, his 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 ingring skills um, are lackluster, but he's got charisma. 
Um, he's got a good look, but he just can't carry a match, especially against guys like Jack Swagger last week and Michael <sighs> McGillicuddy. Yay! Okay. So I think <sighs> I Alex I Riley is still a good four or five months away from doing anything. I don't I don't see him as being the the top player that people on Twitter would like him to be. Um, but last match. Air Boom versus Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins. This was the first time um, that I personally saw Tyler Rex and Kurt Hawkins team up, um, which is good to see. I've heard good good things about them. I still think that they are um, they are a few months away. They weren't really gelling as a as a good team yet, but I think they could. And really, what I really liked about this match wasn't necessarily the match itself, but the fact that they are giving tag teams, you know quality a shots at at the current champions you know it, it, it's it's nice to see air boom competing on raw and smackdown but against teams that aren't at that level yet like the usos epico and prima last week and now tyler rex and kurt hawkins it, it's it's a good way to slowly get everyone you know working together um and hopefully that means good things to come in the tag team division on SmackDown and Raw in the next couple months. So, overall, it was a good show. Um, no complaints. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Joe, walk us through SmackDown. What was your favorite thing about SmackDown? Well, SmackDown, uh, probably the best thing about SmackDown was the main event. Um, leading up to that main event, however, uh, big show starting off SmackDown in the ring. Mark Henry comes out. Daniel Bryan comes out talking about TLC again. Henry and Show both want the title. So, what happens? They both want it. Teddy Long comes out and says, Show versus Henry one more time. The winner gets the number one contendership spot. Which is all well and good. Uh, Zack Ryder beats Cody Rhodes after Booker T distracts him. So Big Show and Mark Henry come out for their match. And David Otunga comes out like a jackass, uh, calling it off. Show punches him out with a WMD. And Otunga goes down. And we have um, sound effects now. Life is yes. definitively better with sound effects, so yes. Yes. Hey, if we all had our own theme songs that followed us around, too, it'd be just like Peter Griffin. Um, Miz comes out, talks some shit, uh, loses to Sheamus. And, you know, Jeremy Van Allen posted on our Facebook, say, noted that uh, Sheamus finally got a win over someone above the mid-card. Uh, if you think that the Miz is above the mid card, which I do, I think he's yeah. upper. I, I think he, he's still in the upper card. Yeah. Um. So, uh, good catch on that, dude. Um. Wade Barrett talks shit about Randy Orton. Orton comes out. They fight in the back. Uh. Kofi Kingston beat Primo, which was an okay match. I, there's something about Kofi matches lately that have just dragged me down. I don't really? know what it is. Do you, I mean, are you getting tired of the style or? I I was, have been a big Kofi fan for a long time, but, yeah. but it, it it's becoming like the old Rey Mysterio matches where it's the same thing over and over and over. That's really my big bitch. I I hate where it's you know that repetitious. Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler uh, goes on, and it's a good match for the main event. And just as you're getting to where you think you're getting near an end, Big Show and Jack Swagger get involved. So Teddy Log comes out. Stops Big Show from beating on uh, Swagger and Ziggler. And what happens? Teddy Long makes it a tag match. Daniel O'Brien and Big Show against Dolph Ziggler and Jack Swagger. You get a little more oomph. It's a lot of fun. And then Big Show and Brian Danielson. Or, I'm sorry, Brian Danielson, Brian, Brian Daniel, Daniel Daniel Bryan. There we go. Dick York, Dick Sergeant, Sergeant York. Da- <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. As if we Daniel Bryan just... Danielson is, uh, uh, you know, they pick up the win to close the show. <laughs> I think it was a solid show. It just had, you know, the the mid the mid lull was a little awkward. Yeah. yeah. With, with with the Kofi yeah. Kingston right. primo. One thing about SmackDown, I don't know if it's worth bringing up, but one of the biggest complaints about uh, the main event was that they changed it to a tag team match. That once again, Teddy Long gave the fans what they wanted, which was not what the fans wanted. It was a beautiful match between Dan O'Brien and Dolph Ziggler. Right, but they want to hold that one off for Ziggler to... Okay, running over Raw. All right. Time for <clears throat> Raw. Let's burn through this real quick. What was your uh, what was your favorite moment of Raw? Um, 
Yeah, you're going to do this quick. Um, Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk. Hands down. Okay. Anybody disagree with that? No? Because no. I don't. No. Don't either. Yeah, fabulous match. I mean, CM Punk beat Jack Swagger before that. Um, and they closed the show with Kane talking shit to Cena, telling him to embrace the hate. It was a beautiful way to close the show, and I can't believe I'm closing the show before I even talked about the rest of it. But really, what was there to talk about? Johnny Laurinaitis coming out as CM Punk to pay homage to him? Come on, that was retarded. Oh, I'm Johnny Laurinaitis, <laughs> Executive Vice President of Talent Relations. And Raw hey, Cole, and general manager. I sound like Connor. Um, Booker T beat Cody Rhodes, finally. Um, <laughs> Eve Torres and Jack Swagger beat Tyson Kidd and Natalia. Uh, Pete Peckney said that Zack Ryder versus Tyson Kidd could be a good rivalry. What do you guys think about that? What does that do for Ryder? Besides good call. Him down. Yeah, good call. Well, I mean, but at the same time, you got to build up the division, and and seeing new people enter yeah, that Ryder's, that title race is Ryder's better than seeing the same old people. Ryder's the champ. Tyson right? Kidd, come on. Well, who would you rather see Zack Ryder face off in uh, his first title defense? Let's see. Uh, anyone but Tyson Kidd, so we can start there. So Natalia, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll eliminate him. <laughs> yes, I would rather see him against. Uh, uh, karma. Well, why? She's pregnant. She can't get hit in the belly. So you're gonna say that that's gonna be a good match? <laughs> we need something for Junk Kevin to rant at. Oh, I, don't don't worry. We have plenty of time. Okay, yeah. good, good. There's good, no good. rush here, Harrison. Let's not rush the, the rant. I have, I have high standards to keep. And if it uh, see, happen, Kevin, Kevin, you're re- Kevin, your drunk rats are like fresh cookies from the oven. I don't want to wait. I just want to gorge myself now and have a belly ache in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but right. no, this this raw on, on the whole to me seemed like a holdover for next week's raw. You know, the first raw of the year, the one two twelve bit, all that. So, yeah, that, this th- seems like that's what I'm saying towards. Yeah, it's and everybody's like coming off the holiday. You know, it's a day after Christmas. Yeah, no one's wanting to work. Everyone's yeah. hung over and, in, in, you know, food coma. No, it definitely had that feel of the Raw before a pay-per-view. Only this time, like you said, it's next week's Raw. With the right. one two, 2-12 bit. Uh, okay, cool. And, All right. And uh, the shining thing, though, Dolph Ziggler really did put in the effort. So, woo. Oh, yeah, he did. Uh, All right, cool. Uh, normally we do main news right about now, but, uh, well, there is no news because everyone's like, you know, Christmas and, you know, no news. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to turn the FTW Megaphone of Rage to our fans. Well, no, have it come from our fans. All right, I screwed that metaphor up. Anyway, uh, CM Punk responded in an interview concerning whether or not the call for the return of the Attitude Era is necessary, saying, quote, the so-called Attitude Era is not needed in this day and age of sports entertainment. Uh, a bunch of our listeners chimed in on this. Uh, Cornelius Jones said that he respectfully disagree- disagrees that wrestling should be less choreographed and more stiffer if someone gets busted open the hard way. Uh, so be it. Uh, basically, it, it was like it was it was like half and half. Uh, Jeff Dubois said, uh, "I miss blood. But it was very overused. Um, I don't think that we need what." Oh, I was gonna say Cornelius Jones sounds like the best wrestling name ever. <laughs> And in this corner, weighing 220 pounds, Cornelius Jones! I mean, it's not far off of Nathan Jones, but... Dude, you could hear that at a UFC fight, couldn't you? Yeah. And fighting from the red corner! Uh, anyway... Cornelius the Cornucopia Jones! (laughs) (laughs) Goes on a giant turkey outfit. There you go. (laughs) Gobble the gooker. Uh, Jeff said that he misses blood. Basically, the thing was, this was great because the people who chimed in gave... What I feel would be the encapsulation of the argument for and against. Uh, Jeff said that um, he misses um, uh, that they need that basically that he misses the blood, but it was very overused. Which, to be fair, it was. Uh, he thinks that what Punk is doing is what people want to do with their jobs nowadays. Uh, be the best there is. Say whatever you want, whenever you want. Make sure everyone knows it. Uh, thing is, though, is that Mike Lightning agreed with Punk, uh, saying that he thinks the Attitude Era and how wrestling took a during the Attitude Era. It was the outrageous storyline after another. The writers didn't necessarily be creative as long as they could fall back on violence and blood. Um, it was nice to see, but basically it was, you know, 
kind of bad. I mean, was it? it here's a really good one. Uh, was it wrestling when The Rock chair shotted mankind thirty seven thousand times during that IQ went I quit match? No, yeah, it, was, it, it, was, it, it, was it really wasn't wrestling. I mean, it was like, yeah, uh, I think Mike's got a point there. But what do you remember about that match? What do you remember most? The five thousand chair shots. Yes. Well, that's all the match was. Oh, you forgot the little takeoff up into the crowd above the. Or to the left of the entrance area and, and I fall off the ladder. And and I don't know if this was the same match, but uh, I remember one of the times Mick Foley won the the championship title by literally using a forklift to pin the rock. I That I really wouldn't count as uh, um, wrestling either. Fair enough. Uh, Lyle, uh, Ige considered, uh, continue the thoughts saying, who needs chairs and cheese graters when you have Ziggler, Punk, and Brian putting on a clinic each night? Also a good point. I mean, these are three incredibly talented wrestlers. I mean, technical yeah. ring wrestlers. I mean, this is like, uh, he who shall not be named and, uh, well, Bret Hart and all those guys are back. And this is what we're seeing again is we're seeing these very, very talented wrestlers. Lyle makes a great point. You know, with with the talent they have in the mid card right now, as well as Punk, as such a such an incredibly talented heavyweight champion right now, you don't need that stuff. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying. Look, I I was the biggest fan of the Attitude Era of ECW, and and, and I always will be. But it's. I don't think it's a bad thing to take a break either. Are we probably? Is it probably going to come back? I say yes. Eventually, I say yes. It will come back. Okay. You know who I really miss? The homicidal, genocidal, suicidal man, Chris Benoit. Hey, in the ring anyway. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh. <laughs> come on, come on. Sorry, everyone. Uh. <laughs> He shall, he who, if we say it three times, he comes out of a mirror. Right? I only made that joke because you keep calling him the man who... Uh, he who shall not be named. Right. He's not Lord Voldemort. Well, for WWE, he is. He's, he has been expunged from their records. I'm pretty sure if you say Benoit, like when WWE opens that museum, if you say Benoit inside it, security gang tackles you and throws you out of the city. No, you're forced to watch Molina promos. <laughs> uh, our producer Garvin had an excellent point. Go for it, buddy. Yeah, I, you know, the one thing that, that I think everyone should consider is that if going back to what we consider the Attitude Era with lots of chair shots and blood um, was successful, more more companies would be doing that in, you know, a successful business. TNA has chair shots and blood, and you don't see them having the same type of reactions um, so I think I think it's just a matter of the business has evolved. If it was successful, someone would be doing it, and they'd be succeeding, and, there's, no, and, no, and no one's doing it. Garvin's exactly right. See, the problem is, if he did anything Attitude Era now, all anybody would say is just, wow, that's so much better than the Attitude Era. It's like when everyone Metallica releases an album now, everyone goes, yeah, it's good. It's not Master of Puppets good, but it's good. Because we all think that was so awesome. Anything that happens now is going to be compared to our perception of it. So if TNA comes down and actually has a hardcore division, we're going to go, it's good, but it's not as good as when Mick Foley and Undertaker would tear the roof down. This that, is going to sell, that is going to sell in the cell, too. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, it's like they peaked. They did it the best. It's never going back. So, it, yeah. But, I mean, i got to be honest, though. Cornelius has a great point, saying that wrestling should be uh, stiffer. And if someone gets busted open during the course of a match... There you go. It happens. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I think he's got a good point, and I think you can kind of combine them. I mean, we saw technical skill and great feats of wrestling even during the Attitude Era. I mean, it wasn't all just barbed wire bats and chair shots and blood. The Attitude Era had its own... I, I, I mean, you still had guys like Triple H, who was a technical master. Bret Hart, uh, Shawn Michaels. Uh, you still had guys who could wrestle... Um, hmm. In addition to doing the other stuff, yeah. Rock Stone Cold WrestleMania twelve was it where Stone Cold broke the glass for the first time? 
Was that 12? I thought 12 or 13. Anyway, yeah. It might have been 13. I might, be, I might be off one. But unbelievable match. Or, I'm sorry. It was Bret Hart. I'm sorry. I'm fucking up here. Bret Hart, Stone Cold, WrestleMania 12 or 13. An, an incredible match. Stone Cold got busted open, but it wasn't on purpose. You know, I mean. Dude, I, was, I mean, some of the. Him. Some of the best Besides matches. the promo, I know that, but that match put him over the top. No, man. I mean, if you want to talk about good matches, you got to go back that vengeance where Jericho beat The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night. In the same yeah. night. Yeah. And immediately after, so he had no break. Yeah. No, it was it was good, and they were full matches. It wasn't like you know two half matches. That was good. Uh, all right. So moving on, Eric from Ohio. Sent in these uh, questions via questions at the FTWpodcast.com. Hint, fans, hint. Uh, we always like spam. Uh, he said, hey, guys, listen to your past show. A couple of things came to me that I'd like to share with you. Uh, first, he said that he didn't think there was a way for WWE to fix Cena until it came to him. Basically, they're capitalizing on the Cena sucks chance by selling the new Cena sucks t-shirts. Uh, he was saying that they could turn him heel, but still keep him a face. I don't know. Weird, right? Anyway, um... Basically, they would make it to where Cena was very obvious that he was pissed off about the Cena sucks chance. And what he did is that he would basically say, everyone who's saying Cena sucks, I'm actually a really good guy, and you're the ones who suck. By rubbing in all the, you know, all, this, all the nice guy stuff he does, you know, the Make-A-Wish kids, the visiting the armed forces, really, pull, you know, really pump up the Super Cena aspect and shove it back in those guys' faces saying, you know, you're booing me, but look at all the good shit I did. What have you done with your lives? Like, that kind of thing. I... That could be interesting, but that was also the last time Jericho was in the WWE. That was also sort of his gimmick. You know, I'm better than you. You know, I came here to help a- improve people, and you people mm-hmm. boo me. No, but, that, but that's different. That, uh, yeah, that, was, that was different. That one's different. And this one, it's it's seen as like, well, if you were good like me by doing all this fucking charity work and shit, you'd be, you know, you'd cheer for me. But fuck you guys. That's uh, pretty much, you know, where he brings in actually what he's doing and no, uses just that like, for reference points. I, think, I figured it'd be more like, what's wrong with you? Why are you uh, booing me when, look at all the good I've done? Well. Yeah, but you actually I, have to reference those things. I still think it'll end up like. There's a way to do it without being a dick. I, I, I still think it'll end up in the minds of the fans. I, I still think it'll end up being like uh, Jericho's last um, gimmick because the fans are just going to see him as pretentious and self-righteous. Like the okay. Miz. And this is what we said a few shows back, maybe maybe even two months ago, that the way you turn John Cena heel is to do the same thing you did with Bret Hart. Yeah. When he turned heel, yeah. all he, he did was, was he sided Canada. with his fans. Yeah, he didn't side against anyone per se, he sided with his fans and the people that were loyal to him. And so that's, that's all he to do. No, that's not necessarily true because when, what made his heel, what made Bret Hart's heel turn cemented and amazing was Shawn Michaels. With Shawn Michaels coming out and his feud with Shawn leading up to their match at WrestleMania, that really cemented the heel thing. But I think, I, I think, I think we were right. Ah, yeah, in that, yeah. This is something Connor wanted us to talk about, too. And uh, even Steve Credo chimed in on this last week, uh, or this week. He says that he thinks WWE is just playing it safe with a possible heel turn. Uh, he said, quote, They obviously don't want him pulling a Hogan and surprising everyone, which would be awesome. Because if that happens, all the little kids will be hurt because they can never watch WWE programming again or buy the shirts. Uh, if you have someone like Kane turn him heel by picking on him, it would be easier to bring him back as a fail. If, uh, I'm sorry, as a face if the heel turn flops. You could just say, I let, you know, I let the best get to me. I won't let it happen again, blah, blah, blah. I'm a better guy now. So, what do you guys think of that? I mean, do you think that's a viable a- avenue for them to explore with it? Uh, I think I, I think it might be a little bit. I mean, I think if you're going to turn uh, Cena heel, the best way to do it is kind of like what you said, you know, only minus the uh, uh, Shawn Michaels, you know, just have Cena say keep doing what he's been saying, saying, you know what, I'm going to side with my fans, and fuck you people that are, are booing me. Um, of course, it's PG, so you won't actually be able to come out and say that, but I think that could be a good way, and with Kane picking on him and, and, and trying to to foster that anger, pulling a little uh, Star Wars Sith action, if you will, um, 
that could work. And if the heel turn flops, it gives the WWE a path to make Cena face again. Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, next up, uh, this was part of an email sent in. This was the uh, second part of an email sent in by Eric. Uh, he said, as for the whole smaller champion movement, uh, we'll get, you know, with, uh, uh, da- you know, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Cody Rhodes, all those guys uh, being holding gold now. Uh, what gets lost in the discussion is the fact that both Punk and Bryan are former Ring of Honor guys, and the fact that they're two... Okay, so they're the two current champions uh, in WWE, and you can kind of say that they're not exactly original WWE characters. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, these two characters that they're playing, really cut their teeth in Ring of Honor. And now they're the main champions of WWE, and that's a really good point. I mean, can you really see something like this happening when Vince was running anything? Do you think this is like a Triple H type influence going on where he's like, you know, that's not a big deal? This is a good point. And, and yeah, you know, I don't know if I can. I, I mean, it's possible that Vince evolves to that level, but I'm not sure. I think Triple H just has more of the pedigree of seeing good wrestling. And, <laughs> and, yes, seeing, uh, seeing good wrestling come from... I don't want to say the miners or the indies or whatever you might call it, but you know, feds that that, that haven't established themselves as much, and, and he sees good wrestling and is able to bring those guys up, saying, "Look, I know what these guys can do. They've proven it. Let's see if they can take it to the next level." And and, and those guys have. So I, you know, Vince is. For all the great things Vince has done, he is a little stubborn in his ways on, on, on some things. Joe, what is Vince like? Kevin. <laughs> yes, Vince likes oh. Kevin, and he also likes big dudes. Okay, so uh, seriously, I mean, I mean, Vince has been very stubborn in his ways for a long time. Uh, is this a little bit of Triple H influence? I, I would say yes. I think it is, and I think this is him saying there's other very good wrestlers out there. There are very good wrestling organizations. Vince had a lot of respect for for ECW, but he didn't bring a lot of guys up from ECW until it was done. So I I will put that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, uh, I I I think that's a pretty good point there, Kevin. I mean. I also think it comes from the fact that Triple H was a wrestler, so he knows what it's like going through the Indies or a developmental fed where you you form your character. Because Triple H himself went through uh, a couple of really, really bad gimmicks before he came out with the one that finally stuck and worked and and, and really propelled him. So I, I definitely think there's some Triple H influence here, as Vince is pretty much the... The, the old guard of you do not mention any rival company. So I was distracted by Kevin. Well, just uh, to clarify, uh, Triple H hasn't... CM Punk and Daniel Bryan came in before Triple H took over in talent uh, scouting. So I wouldn't necessarily credit that per se, but this does add into the theory the CM that Punk, we're going well, wait, to do CM it. Punk did. Yeah, yeah, Daniel yeah, Bryan didn't was... really make references Bryan. to their to ROH. They really didn't make open references to ROH until recently Triple H took over. Well, but that's the thing. I think this 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 all leads into the what we're, you know, calling this era as the real era. Era, rather. So, um I, I think we can't necessarily give credit to any specific person. I think this is just the direction they're taking a, as a whole. That could be. That could be got to believe Ring of Honor loves it. Uh, Speaking of which, Paul Jordan from the TWR Network uh, posted his story this week, which continues to follow up on the conversation we had last week on whether or not Daniel Bryan and CM Punk were realistic champions. Uh, Apparently, former Ring of Honor uh, booker Gabe Sapolsky wrote on a blog on the Heyman Hustle website, uh, noting that his first reaction upon learning that Daniel Bryan won the world title was, fuck you, towards the critics. Basically, he's saying that the critics picked both Punk and Bryan apart, trying to highlight every weakness they perceived that they had, saying that they wouldn't you know, succeed in WWE. And basically, Gabe says to every single one of those guys who said they couldn't cut it, proudly, fuck you. Which, I mean, nothing, there's no sweeter revenge than success. So, yep. right. No, it's great. Two uh, guys who absolutely deserve it should get the fucking title. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and these guys sword. absolutely do deserve it. Uh, all right, okay, so before we move on to our quick hits, uh, do you guys see that this... Uh, do you see the spilling over into Ring of Honor at all? Like the constant mentions of Ring of Honor, the fact that these two guys came up from Ring of Honor. I mean, do, do you see the Ring of Honor benefiting at all in a direct way? I mean, yeah, you can say indirect. I mean, in, yes. a, in a direct way from the comments, yeah, but I don't think... I mean, there's there's a thin line that I think there has they have to walk to either... to still maintain their integrity... So in the you, in the fact that like like they can't be like oh yeah WWE mentioned us because they don't want to push toward that but there's got to you know but I mean they got to find some way to right, take advantage of it they don't want to sound like a developmental fed for exactly. the WWE you Ex- nailed it Rob yep. except except I agree on screen they won't do it but they are promoting that on Twitter they're saying you know look what Daniel Bryan and CM Punk has done watch the next future stars in ROH now. They are saying that on Twitter, so yes. they are kind of tying into it. Yes, so this, this, is, this is what they should do. They should do something subtle. They shouldn't overtly say, well, do you see those superstars are now the title? But look, if, if you're a developmental star on the indie circuit who doesn't who wants to wrestle and be in front of the camera and work on his mic work and doesn't want to go to WWE developmental... Who else are you going to look at at this point? I mean, let's look at this legitimately. You have New Japan, or you have Ring of Honor, who has now given to the WWE two, two world champions that are holding belts right now. If you are someone in the indie circuit, who are you going to look at? Well, right, but at the same time, I mean, you guys, I mean, you got to do it. You, Ring of Honor, you guys are right, has to promote it subtly. They can't come out and be like that town in Iowa with the world with the world's largest ball of yarn. Yes. Oh, look, we have two former WWE fans. I don't like the. I mean, I know I, I, it's just Twitter me. and maybe veiled references to it on their shows. But it's so papers. yeah, but then you're playing to the hipster angle, you know? It's you're, you're like. Probably- you're Come really- to the Agora, where you know we get. You can see you know, where Green Day got started. You can see the next great band. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's a, it is. It's such a hipster angle to play, and I'm not a fan of it. But that's just it, personally it's a hipster angle. But that's in this case, I don't mind it because it's what they have to do to maintain their integrity. Yeah, no, they don't. Uh, they don't have to do it, Kevin. Uh, they don't have to do it. ROH, ROH has been I'm about to say, well, Daniel Bryan. ROH was, has a small WWE's champion. ROH may have a small fan base, but they've got a dedicated fucking fan base. Okay, every time so you watch it, fans. every time you watch one of their shows, every time you watch a pay per view, it is literally like you are watching ECW in the early days. Okay. Uh, how do you attract new fans that way? T- they've been attracting new fans Coupon just, night. <laughs> just by just by showing, just by uh, by saying our guys are going to get a TV you? deal. By saying by our actually guys giving it, getting a TV the deal, big... they've been getting some new fans. By what saying I'm our saying guys is for the bigger for the bigger stage. That's how you attract new fans. <sighs> okay, and let let let's take your thing. Let's let, let let's let's take your hypothesis. If I'm sitting back and I've got a wrestling company saying, "Hey, come watch the former WWE. Uh, come watch the next WWE superstar here on ROH." Why the fuck? Am I going to watch ROH? Why don't I just go to the WWE? You could, but that's what I'm saying is why would ROH publicize that? They could publicize it with the hardcore fans that are, that are, that are, that are their niche. <sighs> We're good? Okay. You guys ready for quick hits? Quick hits! Did, I, did anybody you. else hear Rob have an aneurysm? Love you, Rob. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it was awesome. Love you, Rob. I thought my coupon night idea was a good one. I just, uh, I just didn't want to be here all night arguing with Kevin. <laughs> I wasn't here arguing night. I just wanted, I just wanted, I just wanted. It was good. It was back good. It was no, good. it's okay. Drunk Kevin is like the La Brea Tar Pits. If you just, if you step too close, you're not getting out. <laughs> and then we're gonna find you 40 million years from now, and you're gonna be nothing but bones. And scientists are gonna pick you apart. So it's kind of like when Viscera picks up one of his fat rolls, you just exactly. get sucked in. <laughs> Twinkies and ho-hos fall out. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, all right, quick hits. Uh, it's that time of the year, the time of the year that everybody's doing that thing. Let's look back at 2011 and talk about our picks for the best or worst of 2011. Uh, the things we have on our docket, and we're going to post it on the show because we want to hear from you guys what your guys' best and worst are. Uh, we have face of the year, heel of the year, rising star of the year, disappointment of the year, match of the year, pay-per-view of the year, woman wrestler of the year, and male wrestler of the year. Uh, let's just start with the right at the top, guys. Uh 
your face of the year, Joe. CM Punk. Yeah, I mean, that's there. After he won that title, you know, the push to win that title, and from there on in, it's been full bore. Okay. Kevin, your face of the year. What might be the greatest promo I've ever seen, and if it's not the greatest, it's top three. It is CM Punk, and it's not even close. The guy <laughs> has done phenomenal work the entire year. Great, and look, look, he elevated Cena, who needed it, uh, on his matches. It, it, Punk, can thank you for everything that you have done this year. You have been phenomenal. Okay. Uh, Rob, your face of the year. Uh, <clears throat> I have to give face of the year for me to Mr. Anderson. Um, some of the stuff he did earlier in the year with the company, uh, with TNA, literally putting the company on his back, carrying it. He did a lot of good work. He did some awesome, I mean, just awesome promos on demand. Um, and considering the fact that I hated this guy when he was in WWE and, you know, now I'm like one of the biggest Anderson marks there is. Uh, I just had to give it to him. Uh, face of the year for me, uh, I don't want to go on the CM Punk train, but I am. Uh, face of the guy got interviewed on ESPN. You know, face or what? I mean, it's it like I mean, it's just, yeah. Face of the year. Hands down. I mean, he did it and the crowd popped and it was just like, it was amazing. Uh, I mean, you could argue possibly The Rock because we all marked out at the time, but CM Punk made waves outside the wrestling industry, which I think is kind of crazy. Uh, bigger waves, anyway. Uh, all right, time for Heel of the Year. This is going to be a good one. Heel of the Year. Joe, you're Heel of the Year. <laughs> Do you have to go much farther than hashtag Heel? Dolph Ziggler, baby. You're going with Ziggler, huh? Okay. So, I mean, anything stand out about him this year that makes him the Heel? His, well... The attitude, the cocky attitude, it's like Mr. Perfect 2.0. But young, brash, and he's a f- he's just delivering two matches a night, as we've seen recently. The, the, he's unstoppable. He's, the, the work is great. He's like John Cena level, but like, for work ethic. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Kevin, your heel of the year. Hashtag heel, great year, not going to argue. However, I will go with my heel of the year with the Hall of Pain. Mark Henry got nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Kool-Aid man, sexual chocolate, nothing. And they gave him one fucking shot. And he owned it. End of story. That's it. Awesome. Congratulations to Mark Henry, and I swear I will never remember you as a jobber. I will remember you as the one chance they gave you the fucking shot, and you owned it. And thank you for this year, Mark Henry, for being Heal of the Year. You were incredible. Okay. Rob, you're Heal of the Year. Uh, Mark fucking Henry. You have to say fucking Henry, because Mark Henry doesn't do credit to how he's taken the heel turn that they've given him and just owned it. You know, the Hall of Pain, all of that stuff, just off the charts. Okay. Uh, my heel of the year is a little bit different, and I want to get heat for this, and I don't care. Cody Rhodes. Yes. What? That guy- that's my that's my, that's my my honorable mention, so go ahead, Harris. No, Cody's a strong strong pick. Good. Cody, Cody was – Cody had two things going against him. One, his lineage – you know, his, who his family is. No, because they, that pigeonholes him. I mean, right? Uh, the second thing is, he had, after they broke him up with, after they broke him out of the tag team and he went singles, he was in like that nebulous zone where he was in danger of falling through the cracks, becoming this mid Carter guy, and maybe showing up in NXT or FCW or Superstars. And then it happened. And what happened to, Hen- what happened to Mark Henry happened to Cody Rhodes. Only Cody Rhodes is just now starting his career. And look at where it's going. That, that to me, is just amazing. I'm thinking heal the year because, I mean, Mark Henry, yeah, but heal the year for Cody Rhodes because Mark Henry's ending his career, Cody's just starting. And I I just cannot wait to see where this guy goes with this angle. Uh, All right, rising star of the year. Uh, Your rising star of the year, go Joe. Uh, I'm going to have to say Dolph Ziggler again. Ooh, Dolph gets two awards from Joe. Yeah, I mean, he, he started out low. I mean... 
I I was tired. I was like, okay, whatever. Uh, I don't want to see what he's doing. Uh, but the guy just shot up like a rocket, and it's just everything I had previously said. It made him a good heel. He's just he's hitting it on all cylinders. He's hitting the high points. He's just going. He's just rising. Damn. <laughs> all right, Kevin, your heel, uh, your uh, rising star of the year. It's Ryder, and, and, I, and I'll admit it. I'll admit it. The good guy, pick. the guy made it on his own. He, he, and that's the thing that I'm so impressed about. He, you know, I still think he has work to do, but he he did it on his own, and that is what is so impressive to me. He said, "How can I make myself get over with the fans?" And he did it. And and I, I, he's really the rising star. He he's the one legitimate face the mid card has right now. So I have to give it to Ryder. Okay, cool, Rob. Your uh your rising star of the year. <sighs> This was actually one of my harder picks, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to Austin Aries. I mean, this nice. guy came, this guy came from literally out of nowhere from the Indies, you know, where and so many times you have these wrestlers in the Indies who have their own little following and everything, and then you get them into one of the bigger companies and they just fall. Yeah. Austin has owned it. Yeah. From the from day one in TNA, he's just like, yeah, let me show you why I'm the next big thing. Uh, no, it's an excellent point, Rob. And you want to know why it's an excellent point? Because every time any of us talk about Austin Aries, we keep commenting about how much he hasn't risen yet. Like we keep talking about this guy needs to go further, right. given how far he's come. That's an excellent point. I said uh, Cody Rhodes was my my honorable mention on on the previous one. Austin yeah. is my honorable mention here. Absolutely. Good pick, Rob. Uh, mine is Daniel Bryan. Because, honestly, if you look at Jan- if you look at this time last year, or two years ago, or whatever, uh, if you look January 1st, and you look at where Daniel Bryan was, and then you look at over the course of this year, this and right now he's holding Tom Gold, you got to admire that. And he did it by doing good work. I mean, he, he just did it by being a good worker. He just did it the old-fashioned way. You know, it, it wasn't lightning strikes. It wasn't, you know, he's hot. We better put the belt on him. It was he just went in day on, day in, day out, and just did exceptional, exceptional work. And for that, yeah, he's my rising star because that guy, that kind of talent, someone who can be, have that much tenacity, that's your next John Cena. That's your next kind of guy that you can hang the entire company on. So I'm looking forward to seeing where he's going to be in five years. Uh, now this is going to be the one that sparks a lot of discussion. Your disappointment of the year. Uh, Joe, what was your disappointment of the year? Okay, this one I actually have, to, you know, I've got my pick and I've got the honorable mention. Okay. Um, and this one's, I have, this one needs an explanation, but Karma's pregnancy. Uh, only because it killed the momentum that the, the WWE women's division had. Like, she made the women's division watchable. Like, she, she actually drew interest, fans tuned in to see her. You cannot deny that. And then she got pregnant, which is great. I'm not trying to discount that. You know, that's awesome. But, man, did that do so much damage to the women, to the women's division, the Divas division in WWE. It, it just crushed it. Okay. So the, the fact that we don't have karma is the biggest disappointment. Okay, what's your honorable mention? Brodus Clay's return. Fuck you, WWE. Bring him back. You're not going <laughs> to do it before the end of the year, so there you go. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, Kevin, your disappointment of the year. Joe just likes bitch tits. That's why he wants Curtis <laughs> Clay to come back. <laughs> My disappointment of the year is Jack Swagger. Um, I-, I kept expecting more from the guy. They kept trying new things. They they, they put him with Vicky. They tried a, a little bit of a gimmick change. They tried the push-ups. It, nothing's worked. He hasn't gotten better in the ring. He hasn't gotten better in his matches. He hasn't gotten better in his promos. So Swagger's my disappointment. The the guy is better than this, and he hasn't gotten it done. So step up or get the fuck out, man. I I, I'm done supporting you because I was a Swagger fan, and and I'm just not anymore. I mean, I I, he has so much potential, and it's just not getting it done. Okay, Rob, your disappointment of the year, man. I thought this was going to be leading to more arguing, but it hasn't. Uh, uh, well, like Joe, I've got uh. I've got the the actual winner, and then I've got an honorable mention. Okay. Um, the my my pick is 
Scott Steiner still wrestling and quote unquote doing promos. Um, this is when when people talk about TNA being unwatchable, they've probably just watched a Scott Steiner promo. Um. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I was wondering. I, I'm glad that took a, a couple of seconds to, to settle into people there. something. <laughs> I mean, every time they give them the mic, it's like, and these freaking fans and and their girlfriends and yeah. I mean, just just shut up, Scott. You had a great legendary career. Go home and I don't know, do something. Just get the fuck out of DNA. Deflate. <laughs> yeah. Um, now for my uh, now for my honorable mention uh, it's got to be Jeff Hardy when he's got this big time match against Sting and he shows up just stoned off of his fucking ass. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean that that is something that can kill a company. Yeah. No, that, 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 that's a really good pick, Rob. I was surprised I didn't make it. Well, Scott Steiner is terrible. Uh, all right, my disappointment of the year was the entire TNA world title race segments, everything about it, up until the moment Bobby Roode won it. Really? Yeah, and that's going to lead into my match of the year. So you don't think uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, nope. this time with the title, you don't think that nope. was good? Nope, 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 and I know, and I can tell you exactly why uh, when we get to match of the year. Actually, you know what? I've got one more disappointment of the year. What's that? Uh, the fact that Kickstarter did not accept the I know, China. Right? <laughs> that was gonna be my fail. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find a new fail of the week. Oh, yeah, man. Kickstarter did not accept Joe's uh, invit. Joe's, uh, uh, I don't know, fund to get Joe laid. I guess is what we can talk about, talk about it. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, which is really sad because I can get laid all the time because I have my fiance and but she's awesome. But other people but won't pay to have it happen. There was a time where I would pay to have it happen. <laughs> well, other people. So, yeah, send Joe out. If you don't recall, two weeks ago we wanted to set up a Kickstarter. Well, if you want a up. webcam show, it's going to cost you. Yeah. To fund Joe to have a date with China because she is on some porn star hookup site or porn star. Uh, what was it? It was uh, Escort basically... Escort service. Escort service, where porn stars can be an escort, and uh, we were gonna have, we were gonna try and fund Joe to get out there to have a date with her. Uh, it, I don't think we'd be able to pull off the entire day, but uh, in the evening, hopefully with an interview. But Kickstarter, unfortunately, the admins said no. I am sorry, we will not allow you to do that. They only want serious inquiries or some bullshit like that. I don't care. Uh, Garvin, what was your disappointment? Of yeah, the year? I just wanted to add. I, my major disappointment of the year was the fact that we never found out who lowered the cage. Yes. Oh, it's right. Good call. Good call. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The WWE finally had me on the edge of my seat, and we still have not answered any of the questions that were raised. Well, you can see the same thing. thing like, we just pushed everyone apart. You know, Triple H fi- fighting Nash. CM Punk isn't even involved in that storyline anymore. And neither is Cena. And it's... That's There's nothing funny. wrong with the little mystery. Everybody liked yeah. the Raw GM angle. And what happened to that? For that, yeah, in... Good call, Garvin. It's like a toy they don't want to play with anymore. Wonder how long it's gonna be until that angles at goodwill. All right, match of the year, the absolute what you would feel is the best match of the year. Joe, what was your match of the year? If anybody disagrees with this, well, well then you just disagree, and I can't really say anything about it because it's your own fucking opinion. But then you're stupid. Uh, the match of the year was CM Punk versus John Cena at Money in the Bank. I mean, really? You can you was there another match that you could really sit there and go, "Oh my god!" Like sitting on the edge of your seat, like afraid to look at the clock because it might be over. Yeah, tight match. I mean, that was just phenomenal. Cool. All right. Ru- uh, sorry, Kevin. Your uh, your match of the year. I want to disagree, but Joe's right. Cena, Cena, and Punk at Money in the Bank had it all. It had the crowd, and Rob has said it, and being a Chicagoan and being there, I will take his word that it's the loudest he's ever heard in the arena, and it's the loudest I've ever heard in the arena, a rot. And the match was phenomenal. I mean, I mean, 
captivating. It was it was it, just outstanding. The best match in, in at least two to three years, and you could maybe put it even a little bit longer. Phenomenal match, and Cena really needed that. Can, can we can we all, regardless of what else you have to think about Cena, he elevated his game. He had a guy that he could work with, and, and Cena needed that to give him a little bit of credibility with actual wrestling fans. He did a great job. And yeah. it was it was it was a phenomenal match and, and 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 those guys thank you so much for giving us that because we take for granted the things that we have and it was so good. So thank you, Punk, thank you, Cena, for f- phenomenal fucking match. Yeah, uh Garvin is agreeing with you. He's saying that uh uh with everything that was going against everything that we thought it was ha- what was gonna happen, that match has it, hands down. And he said uh that match is what made him a huge wrestling fan again, and I can attest to that. Uh, Rob, your match of the year. Uh, <clears throat> I completely agree. Uh, CM Punk and Cena, Money in the Bank. I mean, the crowd, the storyline, the performance these guys put on. I mean, just, it was epic. I mean, I'd been saying for years that CM Punk was a much better wrestler than WWE let him show, and, you know, he finally showed it. Um, I mean, and it helps see now too. I mean, it was just God. No, no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, oh, I'm gonna get so much crap for this. Mine is not the Cena CM Punk match. Uh, mine is Bobby Roode winning the World Champ title in TNA, and the reason why is because up until that moment, TNA didn't want to eat their own dog food. They did not want to have a homegrown talent be the face of the company and carry it throughout major storylines and from show to show to show, giving it top billing. Everybody beforehand was either uh, a former WWE talent or a former WCW talent. So the fact that they had a homegrown boy come up from nowhere with a great, basically with a great storyline and TNA saying, okay, we're going to hang the belt on this guy. Let's see how it goes. And Bobby Roode, to his credit, is doing it. And to me, as far as implications of what that means for a company going forward, it made me trust that TNA is heading in the right direction. That match to me was, you know, the rudder turning another way, the ship going towards the sunset and going, okay, these guys at least, I mean, they're, they're willing to at least entertain an idea that I feel is the right direction. So that, that's why that match to me is match of the year because of the implications it has for TNA. Proper. <laughs> I can go for that. Kevin is just posting all these drunk messages in Skype. It's really funny. Uh, <laughs> sorry, everybody. I really wish we could share these with you, but I'm not going to read them. Uh, pay-per-view of the year. What was your pick for pay-per-view of the year? Joe. Uh, mostly because it's one of my favorite pay-per-views because it highlights my favorite match. Um, I'm going to have to go Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank, ha- I mean, obviously the John Cena CM Punk match. And two Money in the Bank matches. It, it's you had Daniel Bryan winning. It's just fucking awesome. Love it. Love it. Best match of the year or best pay for you of the year. Okay, Kevin, your uh, your pay per view of the year. My pay per view of the year is for very selfish reasons, but I don't care. It was Survivor Series at Joe's house, and props <laughs> to fucking Joe for throwing a, 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 a an epic fucking party. First of all. Scott loved hanging out with you, sitting next to you, just BSing about whatever wrestling, Minecraft, Macking out. Minecraft, to games. Scott, you're my slip in the tip. It was. It, it, <laughs> it just the tip. There might have been some nipple grabbing, like, like oh, sorry. No, for, but that was when we were sober. For real, Joe. It, it not only, I mean, save the main event. The, the pay per view was great, and Joe just. Had, had through a great party and it, it was everything that, that I loved about wrestling it was just getting together with your friends BSing about the matches the promos everything Gar- Garvin 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 and I were like just like he turns to me after the last match and just goes what the fuck and, and I looked at him I'm like <laughs> yeah I mean it was like it was perfect I mean it was it was exactly what you wanted with your friends that love wrestling and so, so Joe, thank you for for having that. I, I would love it to be a tradition. 
I love it to happen every fucking year. Just one pay per view at Joe's or, or at anywhere. Maybe we come to Cleveland. Maybe we come to, to Chicago. Just okay. one pay per view a year where we all get together. Yeah, it's, it. It, was, it was great. There was, it, it was, there was so definitely um, a different atmosphere when you are, you know, watching a pay per view with a bunch of people. You know, generally I watch pay per views by myself. And there was and like it there was like thirty people. Okay, yeah, was, for, for anyone who's wondering, it wasn't like we a, had nineteen uh, in total. You're downgrading. There were like thirty party. people. First we had all, nineteen. First of all, you're downgrading your party. Let's up it by the people that came and left or whatever here. The, no, 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 no. Nineteen quality motherfuckers. That's what I'm saying. 19 quality people. I'm not talking listen, about the riffraff. Listen, it was an amazing time. It was fucking awesome. And and really, and, and Garvin put it best. It's it's a different atmosphere when you're watching it with, with, with people that love it. When you're in a small environment, when you're talking about it the whole time. It, it was great. It, it was outstanding. And, 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 and Joe, thank you. I, I cheers my last few gulps of Crown Royal to you. Cheers, sir. Rob, <coughs> finally, your pay per <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What? Uh, um, my, you get to talk now, Rob. You get to talk. Go ahead. My, my pay per view of the year, um, uh, just because I was impressed by. Well, I'll, I'll give my pick first and then I'll explain why. I'm going to go with Final Resolution. And the reason I say that is because. Leading up to and after Final Resolution, we were talking about how TNA was finally doing what it needed to do to start writing the ship, to start solidifying itself as a company, and to start moving forward in a positive way. And I think that com- uh, uh, accumulated at a, a Final Resolution. I mean, we had uh, a solid pay-per-view. Uh, there weren't any really bad matches there were a, there were a couple of really good matches. Um, all in all, I think it was a good way to end the year on a positive note and give TNA momentum going into next year. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, my match of the year, Money in the Bank, hands down. I mean, Money in the Bank is always good, but this year, I don't know. It, it was on par. Everything. It was. It was every single thing that WWE can't control going into a pay per view went one hundred percent their way. Uh, the crowd, the matches, segments, everything that they couldn't do. I mean, wrestle. I mean, I- I'm hard pressed to think that. Well, this year's WrestleMania wasn't nearly as good. I don't really think even next year's WrestleMania is going to be as good because. And <sighs> give it to the Chicago fans, brought the house down. Money in the Bank was it, hands down. Uh, all right, here we go. Woman wrestler of the year. Kevin, try and keep it down to ten minutes. Joe. <laughs> Velvet Sky. Velvet Sky elevated her game this year and really proved her value. So, props to her. She really got to come out of her shell of being the eye candy bimbo and actually did amazing work. So, props to her. Okay, cool. Uh, Kevin, here we go. Your woman wrestler of the year. Karma, and it's not even close. Wait, wait, what? There's not a Mickey or a James in there? Karma. And it's not even close. Any particular reason why? Keep it. Karma. Dude, she made she and made the WWE women's division watching. Okay. All right. Close. Rob, your uh woman wrestler of the of the year. Uh I'm going to agree with Joe and I'm also going to pick Velvet Sky. I mean, uh this is a woman who when she was in the indies showcased that she had a lot of talent, was a really good solid wrestler. But TNA, like Joe said, you know, they they relegated her to the role of the eye candy bimbo because God forbid she should show up Angelina Love or somebody like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when they finally gave her her push, she had she she came up with a great gimmick. I mean, she had a great way to connect with the crowd um, when she comes out and is talking about how. You know, she's always been the runt and she's been bullied and everything like that. There's not one person in the crowd that can't identify with that, that hasn't at some point in time been bullied. Um, and it's a really good way to 
to get the crowd on your side and cheering for you. And when she finally won the title, I mean, it was just, I, I mean, it was really great. It was good to see, like you said with uh, Bobby Root, it was good to see TNA taking talent that was, that was their original talent that they didn't take from WWE or something and, you know, say, okay, we're going to put the title on you. No, absolutely. No, good pick. Uh, unfortunately, my picks have already been said. Uh, my pick was Karma. Uh, basically, for exactly what Joe said, this woman showed up in WWE and she made the Divas division amazing, compelling, and in some cases, the highlight of whatever show she was on never wrestled a match. Never had a formal title run, never had a storyline outside of Karma's Gonna Kill You, basically. And she dominated. She gave energy to a dead division. And you gotta just... Just by her presence alone did it. Uh, and my other... It, it's a tie. I don't even have, like, you know, second place. Uh, Velvet Sky, for example. What, I mean, I'm a huge Velvet Sky mark. I mean, I got a little bit of a crush on her. But she is an astound, astonishing talent. And the fact that she got to spread her wings and fly is just amazing. I mean, she is just killing it this year. Yes, Garvin. Uh, all right. Male Wrestler of the Year. I have a funny feeling all of ours are going to be the same pick. Male Wrestler of the Year. Joe, what's your Male Wrestler of the Year? This is the one I've been toying with. I've been trying to come up with something. That isn't CM that, Punk? Yeah, it, it's Brian really tough. me. And, you know, I keep thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. Uh, you know, and I'm like, do I have a valid excuse for X or Y or Z? Oh, it's Johnny Laurinaitis. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with... Mm, damn. Me, Thanks. You know what? Come back to me, because I just need okay. more time. All right, fine. Yeah, understandable. Kevin, your male wrestler of the year. I chose Mark Henry as my heel of the year, because he's done a phenomenal job. My wrestler of the year is Cody Rhodes. And if you what? want to give me some hate... What? Are you stoned? Just... No, you're drunk. That's Not... the problem. Yeah, that's it. There it is. Thank, oh. thank you, Rob. You want to choose? You want me to? You want to give me some heat for choosing a heel that's not my heel of the year and choosing Cody Rhodes as the rest of the year? You go right the fuck ahead. Cody that's Rhodes did yeah. phenomenal, phenomenal ring work the entire year. Not three fourths of it is a heel and one fourth of it is a face, and never looked back. I've got, I've got mine. Crossroads okay, became an incredible finisher. He did great mic work on both sides of the fence. He brought back the IC title, the old one. And he only little... had to rip off and, and, and Rob, the Rob, to do Shut it. up, Rob. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can justify whatever the fuck you want when I'm done. Rob, get the old school IC title. Yeah, okay. Help up, stand strong. An incredible mid card. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll give you that one. We'll give you that I one, Kevin. We'll see what you're saying when you're sober. But yeah, we'll give you that one. I will take Cody Rhodes as the as the wrestler of the year, barely over Dolph Ziggler, just barely. Okay, uh, Joe, your wrestler of the year. Um, it's John Cena, and I will tell you why. Good pick. Because the well, one, I mean, the man does all the fucking charity work, but look at how many major storylines are still being built around this guy. You've got you set up WrestleMania a year in fucking advance. That's a big thing. You put him in in feuds with CM Punk, which was one of the biggest feuds of the year. I mean, Alberto Del Rio. You, I mean, you just had all these guys dude, all building off of, off of him, and he's held it up pretty good despite all the fans turning on him. And there's they still have miles to go with him, and you know he's he's the fucking juggernaut in the gym and for the company. So enough, yeah. Man. Rob, your res your male wrestler of the year. Uh, much like Joe, uh, I had a real hard time with this one. I'm going to say Austin Aries, and just behind him, CM Punk. I mean, Austin Aries has 
again, like I said, when I picked him for my face of the year, or for when I picked him for, um, when I picked him earlier on, uh, you know, this is a guy who literally came out of nowhere. I mean, and has done tremendous work building up TNA's product, making the X Division strong, making it watchable, really doing some great work. And he's really helped a lot of the younger X Division guys come up. So I can see CM Punk, and he was just my and 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 he's my honorable mention. But I've got to give it to Austin Aries. Uh, okay. Uh, here we go. Male wrestler of the year. I really, really, really wanted to say anybody but him, but it's Sam Punk. Every time I sat down with this question and I toiled with it, trying to figure out what would be a better choice than CM Punk. And every single person I came up with, I said, yeah, but he wasn't this. He didn't do this. And every time this came up, it was Punk. CM Punk, my, 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 my uncle, my uncle never watched pro wrestling. He's a hardcore baseball fan through and through and through and through. He came up to me and said, you watch wrestling, right? What can you tell me about the CM Punk guy I keep hearing about on ESPN? You cannot tell me that that does not deserve male wrestler of the year. When you can reach out beyond our industry, beyond even beyond mar- us as marks and casual fans and little kids and say that, you know, just someone who doesn't even watch the product is asking about one person in general. Or, it, it, I mean, I'm not, not in general, but in specific because of his shoe promo. It, it's just, he's male wrestler of the year for the exact reason that every wrestler wants to be a wrestler. They want to be that famous. And they want to have that kind of sway over the company. And his shoe promo, we will still be talking about it years from now. Yeah. Uh, you make you make a good point there, Harrison, and you know, like the stuff he did at Comic Con and, and stuff. I mean, he really did uh, a lot of good work, and that's why, like I said, he's right up there. But uh, I wanted to give it to Austin Aries because uh, uh, I think he's done a lot of great work. I think he's been kind of like TNA's version of CM Punk. Yeah, but I mean, Austin Aries is a great talent, but WWE really turned a corner and went in a new direction as a company, and they I don't think they could have done it without Punk. I'm sorry, yeah, you're right. I can't wait for Kevin to just get sloshed and dump Crown Royal over himself. That'll be hilarious. Uh, all right, you guys ready it's for It's empty. Show? I drank it all. Fun, when you there is puke. no more Crown Royal left because I drank it all. He's slowly melting into Fuck. the coma. We don't have much time left. All right, we got to get this through. We got to run through the show. Okay, ready? All right, who's ready for win fail? This guy! All right! (laughs) Wins of the week! Uh, Joe, your win of the week. Um, My win of the week is the singles match gone tag match on SmackDown. It gives us more Ziggler. Yay! (laughs) All right, Kevin, your win of the week. My win of the week was was Kurt Angle taking the Christmas tree and throwing it on the other guys. Look, the promo was horrible. And I mean horrible. When he took the Christmas tree and just threw it on him. <laughs> that was too good. Awesome. Rob, you're winning the week. So hot. That was fucking hilarious. Uh, my win of the week is <laughs> Kevin being fucking drunk off his ass. God damn it, now I need a new win. Harrison, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a new win. That is the Thank opposite you, of what you need. You need that win again. Rolling on. Garfin, you're a win of the week. I should have drank more White Russians before I came on. Um, okay, <laughs> my win of the week is to uh, John Laurinaitis. I actually loved him coming out to CM Punk's music at the very start of the show. I know you guys don't necessarily agree, but I think he's making some giant strides to being actually halfway decent at the character they're trying to give him. Oh, yeah, I, I, I think he's a really good heel. Now if we only had a voice. 
Rob, what is wrong with John Laurinaitis? Come on, man. He just came from the library. Uh, my win of the week is Kane. I want for Christmas some throat lozenges. <laughs> uh, my win of the week is Kane uh, for being awesome. I, I cannot... I can't keep up with the show anymore. Uh, fails of the week. Joe, you're fail of the week. Ooh. That is a very tough question. Um, David Atunga. Nope. He exists. <laughs> he exists. It's bad. And him? Rob spitting beverage all over his computer. Didn't I pick Not on my computer, NXT? just myself. Oh. Oh, okay. Didn't I pick David Otunga to win NXT? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. That's a good fail of the, fail of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still- hey, I picked Heath Slater. Yeah, that's true. You picked Heath Slater. Uh, but that was last year. Yeah, that was last year, so we're in the clear. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm still winning in the uh, pay-per-view tally, though. So, Kevin, your oh, win yeah. of fail. I'm sorry, fail of the week. Fail, fail of the week. Fail. My fail of the week is my crowd royal bottle for like not having more in it. That's <laughs> bullshit. I should have bought a bigger bottle, or you should have refilled yourself. Because I need more crown royal for this podcast. Even though it is, look, I have a glass that's empty, I have a bottle that's empty. I. Maybe you should have planned better. Maybe somebody should have brought me more Crown Royal for this fucking podcast. So I blame all of you. Blame your wife. No, no, I blame all of you for not thinking ahead and telling me to buy more. It's Kevin, on, we did get you more it's Crown on Harrison. Royal. No, Kevin, I got you more Crown Royal. It's underneath your desk. Go look. Notice how I'm still sitting here. Damn it. Fuck <laughs> it, you. Rob, you're fail of the week. Uh, it would have been so awesome if Kevin had looked under his desk. <laughs> right? It would have been fantastic. I thought he was drunk enough, but I guess not. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll try again about that. No, 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 And no. We're good? Rob, your fail yeah. of the week. My fail of the week is uh, the knockout segment at uh, um, on Impact, you know, complete with the T-Bowing. Uh, it was just a goddamn train wreck. Boo, go Tebow. Go Tebowing. <laughs> uh, my fail of the uh, week is Skype, to be completely honest. You guys have no idea how much of a hassle it was today and how much of a hassle it's been. It, it, ugh, ugh, I just fucking hate this program. Yeah, uh, so, that's not including me being drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm getting to my wits end with what I'm able to deal with right now on the show. So, uh, all right. Garvin, your fail of the week. My fail is Teddy Long suggesting he's going to do what all the fans want on SmackDown and do the opposite of what the fans wanted. We wanted to see Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan finish out, but no, they had to make it a tag match because that's what Teddy Long does because that's how they roll on SmackDown. <laughs> that's my fail. All right, cool. Uh, hang on a sec. Okay, are we going to do a win fail of the year? I don't really see a point. No, let's skip it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Administrative details. Big announcement for everybody. Next week, the FTW podcast is going live. That's right. We're going to take this disaster and bring it unedited straight to you. Uh, more information will be posted on the site as we get closer. But mark your calendars January 3rd, 2012. You can listen and chat live with us at ftwpodcast.com slash live. And even call in and talk with us on the air. This is going to Yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, we'll I start. wish I was going to be that drunk for that time. You, so help me God, Kevin, if you are, I'm dropping you from the show. Oh, uh, you are Because the- we can't... Dude, I, 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 I have... Fuck it, Ab. No, because I have the entire week off. My day tomorrow is going to be editing this disaster. And I am not... I, I don't want to do that and then have to deal with a live show, too. So anyway, keep your eye on our Facebook and Twitter accounts and make sure to bookmark ftwpodcast.com slash live. Yeah, it's oh god, it's gonna be okay. To be completely honest, it'll probably be a hell of a lot of fun because we've been doing live shows on the weekends for TWR, and it's gonna be a blast. All right, uh, in our questions of the week, it's gonna be simple. We're gonna throw our list up on our Facebook. We want to hear what you think your of the year is, best and worst of. We're gonna have it up there. 
throw up there, uh, tw- uh, hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, let us know. Uh, as always, you can find this episode as well as our entire archive at ftwpodcast.com. And just in case you want to share those experiences with others, join us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time on twrnetwork.com. Chat with us and the rest of the listeners on TWR as we listen to the show and live bloggy. Boo 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 boo. I'm sorry? Up next week. We're yeah, next week's going to be Tuesday. Yeah, sorry. Next week is going to be Tuesday. Uh, you can hit us up at Facebook.com slash FDW Podcast, Twitter.com slash FDW Podcast, YouTube.com slash, surprise, FDW Podcast. Phone us at the FDW Podcast. The FDW Podcast.com. Damn it, so close. YouTube.com slash the FDW Podcast. Uh, still trying to get that one going. Uh, uh, phone us at 313-444-FTW4. That's 313-444-3894. Is that the line that they're going to use to call in? Or is that going to be a different number? Uh, next on Tuesday, that's going to be the number? Yes. No, it's good. Oh, oh Yes, okay. no. It we will should be. Know, we you should know this before out. Tuesday. Okay, all right. So for live call in, 313-444-FTW4, and then we'll get you on the show. Uh, download our iOS and Android apps so we can pay for new pants. And please, 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 please rate us on iTunes because we use it as a way to gauge how worthy we are as human beings. Is there anything else yes. we're good with? Did Kevin die? Kevin, Kevin's dead, isn't he? He is Fuck dead. you. Someone no roll, rebuttal. Someone roll him over on his side or he'll choke on his own vomit. No, that's going to be the win of the week. Team no rebuttal. That's right. (laughs) All right. Uh, We're going to be doing this live. We're not going to be this drunk. Any listeners? See, if you say you say it's not going to be, he's going to be this drunk. He's still going to be drunk. Team no rebuttal.